Welcome to the latest episode of Gallery by Art Radio. Thank you. Um, I am one of your hosts, uh, David Beauchamp, and to my right, Six. And to my left, Clayton Wick. And we're here discussing episode two of Torchwood, Torchwood Miracle Day. Um, and let's just jump right in, which I pretty much say every time. Um, what do you guys like about this episode? I thought that it was just leaps and bounds over the first episode of the season. I really think that now that they've introduced more of the characters, they've had a chance to really get into the actual story and uh, introducing the CIA conspiracy, I think, is a really interesting thing to do, especially because they haven't yet really made it clear what it is they're trying to accomplish. Just that apparently it's the CIA that wants Captain Jack dead. Hmm. I just like how it's completely, I'm just blown away at the differences, because I've only seen season one, Torchwood, and this is completely mind-blowing, just, it, just so different. Um, I do agree with Clayton how they've added more about the, the CIA and the conspiracies towards it, and it was also kind of liked it because it was kind of comedic in my opinion, you know, the gay jokes and all. Yeah, um, for, <laughs> for me, I still thought this was a setup episode, but I think this is the last setup episode. Because um, for me, it was like they were finally putting all the pieces or characters on the chessboard for the game to begin. Yeah, that, that's actually one of the problems, I think, with the first episode, that it really feels more like the first half to a two-hour long introduction episode. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these two, I think, really fit well together, the first mm -hmm. episode and second episode, because they, they put, I think, everything on the board. Yeah. Um, we, we know about more of the dire situation that's occurring because people aren't dying. Um, humans are becoming uh, incubators for uh, disease. Um, people aren't dying, they're so, but they're still growing old. And with age comes lots and lots of pain. Um, and death took care of that before. Now, like they said, they need more pain medication. I mean, there's there's that factor. And <clears throat> I think one thing they, they, they miss said, but in the sense was right, they were saying the planet's dying. The planet's not dying. I mean, the planet's not going to die. The planet's Earth. It's a, it's a, it's a physical mass yeah. that won't be destroyed. Yeah. The ecosystem is what's going to get damaged and destroyed in some form or fashion with the overpopulation. Oh, yeah. well, they only ever brought up the possibility that the planet could be dying. Yeah, I just... <clears throat> it always bug, bugs me when they say planet's dying when they actually mean ecosystem. Yeah. Or humanity or something like that that's that's what's really dying not so much the planet i mean the planet's this big massive hunk of rock and molten magma i mean that's not going to die it's it's an animate object in a sense so <clears throat> what didn't we like about this episode i think i um i sort of said that the planet thing but i mean that's that's pretty much a very minute just wordage in, in my part but did, is there anything you didn't like about this episode uh <coughs> I don't know, I thought that it was pretty well paced. I thought that they they uh, did a pretty good job introducing the additional characters that hadn't been seen before. And, uh, I don't know, I think that it was just a really good episode for what it was intending to do. I gotta say, the pacing was phenomenal in this episode. It, yeah. I think it moved better than the last episode. I, I think the last episode had some slow parts, but of course, it was an introduction episode. I mean, you can't, admit, you can't expect it to be... Bam, 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 bam. But I really think that this one, the pace was perfect because you it just flowed really smoothly. Yeah, it it was paced in a really weird way in the sense that it actually felt like every character had more screen time than they had in the previous episode. Yeah, yeah. And they actually added more characters. Yeah, I, I think it was just a very effective use of time management in terms of getting across the story. So okay, I got some questions for you, like sort of like last time. Um, Okay, uh, Rex, the black CIA agent. I sort of lost sympathy for the character after what he did with, at the beginning to Reese, the, the baby, and Gwen. Yeah. How he split them up. But then, of course, at the end, he had that really good point about, hey, at least you're not here in this mess. That's true. Well, I didn't have any problem with him splitting them up. He's saying that he doesn't want an infant to be in a CIA holding cell or put in, or put in uh, protected custody. 
what he was really making was the best possible choice he could make. It was the most humane decision he could make in the yeah. context. But do you think he'd have done it in a better way than the way he did it? I think he could have maybe given them fair warning, yeah, but... Okay. I think that he was really just eager to get back on American soil after being killed, so, after being after so many attempts on his life in the very brief time he was in the UK. Yeah. Uh, good point. Um, what about Esther? I totally think she's she might be one of the wild cards in in this show. Uh, because I mean, she picked up being a spy like that. I thought it was really awesome. As soon as she realizes she's being framed, she's able to get out of the headquarters and she did it so naturally like yeah. she's been training for this yeah even though she appears to be nothing more than an analyst yeah i i think that she's probably going to be our new point of view character you think so yeah i, I think that she's <coughs> there's there's a lot of parallels between this two parter and the pilot episode of torchwood you know and that we have this you know this new character coming in to this established situation and reacting to all of the new stuff that she's being put up against, and I think that she's the character we're really supposed to sympathize with above everyone else. Yeah, that's a really good point, because that's one thing about Torchwood. There are not always a lot of sympathetic characters in the show. Yeah, but you need one. You do. <laughs> I, and I think, I, I think I was the family of season one of Torchwood. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a sympathetic character. There wasn't I mean, all. the closest thing you had was Reese, but Reese didn't have enough screen time you know, to really become that sympathetic character. Yeah. Um... He had okay. Very okay. Oswald Danes, our serial killer. Did you be, did you believe his sincerity or not in that interview? No. No. Not at all. Why? Uh, I think that this goes along with what he was explaining to the PA backstage. No one's going to hire him anymore. So what he has to do if he's going to exist in this new world? is carve out a place for himself in it. Yeah. Being a repentant, inspirational figure is a really good way to accomplish that. Yeah, um, Yeah. I mean, I have a little bit of background in serial killers and stuff like that. I totally don't buy his, his repentant nature at all. But I have to wonder, could he actually be this red herring of the shell game that we're watching? I could see that happening. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, it's not like he would have had the technology or the ability to cause this to happen. But, I mean, are they making him more of a focus point as a red herring for us? Or do you think he might play play into this more as we move along the story? I think the, I think he is going to play into the resolution of the, of the uh, season plot. I, I don't see him being a character who does things in the following season of the show, should there be one. Yeah. I, but I do think that he is going to be tied to the resolution of this story. Yeah. Um, okay, I was going to say, I do like one's badass scene in there, where she says she's Welsh, Welsh. And, yeah. and not English. That was that was really good. Um, and i got to say, I like the effect with the, the broken neck girl. Oh, that was, that was, would, that that was, was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. But the I, arm, what it, that part with the... With the arm still being alive. Which, I, you know, it, it's really interesting that, you know, even something that doesn't need oxygen, per se, is still living. Yeah. Um, one, th one thing that did, that, that sort of, I really hope they're not going this way because Doctor Who's doing it right now, that line about Gwen thinking that Jack was going to come back to her when she was an old maid mm -hmm. so he could kidnap her granddaughter. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. exactly sort of what's happening in Doctor Who right now. It which seems is, like it might have been a callback to me. You think so? Yeah. Because, I mean, for me, it's like, it's Peter Pan, because, I mean, my entire theory behind who River was was the whole Peter Pan myth or not myth, uh, fairy tale thing that, you know, because Moffat said, you know, Doctor Who to him can be very much a fairy tale. And I'm just worried. I, I really hope we don't get that fairy tale esque thing with Torchwood, because Torchwood is more of a adult show. It really is. Do you really see Davies doing anything that upbeat? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Um, so do you have any um, anything else you want to say about the episode? Come on, I know you do. Yes, you brought up that I'm, great I'm, point. I'm actually very interested in where you're going with uh, the uh, the PR executive. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I think that scene where she was with Bill Pullman, I think that was a 
that clearly establishes what her role in this season is going to be. I think that she's going to I think that she's going to be working toward the greater good, but that's only because evil turned down her initial offer. <laughs> nice. Well, he did say that if the devil was alive, he would be a PR man. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing. And I don't think it's a coincidence that she ended up in two very important places in, in one day. Or dressed in red. Or that. Which I thought was kind of funny that he'd make the double comment her with her dressed in red. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that's just symbolism. <laughs> Maybe. I, I, just, I just don't know with Davies. You know, that might have just been the luck of the draw with wardrobe. Yeah. So what about the other point that you brought up about the photograph? Because I really liked what you said about that earlier. Oh, yeah, during the serial killer interview, one thing that really bothered me was that they had a picture of the victim in the background. All I could think was, how do you get that picture? Who is it who just goes around to the production crew and goes, hey, who's got a 12-year-old daughter whose picture we can use for a murder-rape victim? I have to I have to assume they gave it to one of the least to one of the less liked production assistants maybe. <laughs> actually, I'm curious about how much money they actually got paid to use that girl's picture, because I mean it usually could have been stock a stock photo or something, yeah, but been. still they had to pay for it. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, I, I never thought about that when I was watching. I was like, yeah, that's really fucked up. You know, I was like, wow. I think brought up a really good point about that. And it's just creepy because Bill Pullman can pull off like a really creepy motherfucker. And seeing him like as a serial killer and this sweet little innocent girl that does not look like she's 12 years old and you hear about rape and, rape and murder, I'm almost just like, ugh. Clearly well, someone hasn't seen Casper. Which Casper? One with Bill Pullman in it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Oh, it's really... been a really long time since I yeah. saw the movie Casper. And what's really disturbing about his character, he used to be a school teacher. I, I missed that in the first episode. Oh. But in the second episode, they, they clearly say that he was a school teacher, too. Yeah, I didn't know that you missed that. I missed it in the first episode, oh. but I caught it this time around. I mean, just the fact that, yeah, that's... Yeah, I mean, Davies knows how to make some very, some very unlikable, unredeemable characters. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm really curious to see who's going to end up being redeemed, who's going to end up dying, because I was thinking about it, I don't know if those chemicals that kill somebody in, in, when you inject somebody to death, uh, IV, IV death, if those stay in your system or not, because if the body stops, if, if they fix this, I mean, those chemicals that are still inside him would kill him instantly. Yeah. Um, and depending on how much stress and damage Rex has done to himself, by the end of Miracle Day, I mean, he did. He his body might just give out because he hasn't given it time to heal. Uh -huh. Especially after that other CIA agent beat the shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, there's a lot I'm really curious about, and of course Gwen's dad. I'm curious about him. What's gonna happen to him? So I mean, I think I think the show, the season, we're two episodes in, eight to go. I think it's off to a, a phenomenal start, especially for being Torchwood and also being uh, Davies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree, especially because when he's a Davies, because I've seen, I'm watching Doctor Who right now, starting season three, and a lot of his stuff doesn't usually draw me in, but so and season one of Torchwood definitely didn't draw me in at all. <laughs> it was slightly painful at times, but this Miracle Day has just, you know, kept my attention, so I enjoyed it. Anything else you want to say about this episode? Uh, no, not really. Cool. I, I'm, I'm just excited for the third episode yeah. of the season. Yeah, um, and... It's really hard to say when he's Torchwood. I'm excited for the next yeah. episode. Um, and, um, <laughs> and next time we'll also take a look at the first three parts of the online thing that they're doing. Or actually, I should say, on the iPad, um, they're doing this little, these mini episodes. Cool. Um, that tie into it somehow. Um, the first one's out, I have to download the second, and by next week the third one will be out. And we'll, we'll also watch those three, and we'll, we'll discuss what we see here. Because it's going to be, a, I think, a ten-parter. So ten -parter. that'll give us a good, good one-third of the way through the, uh, through the web, webisode thing. Okay. Cool. And, and until next time, uh, this is us signing out. Peace.